Jerry Lynn versus Truth in the Lumberjack match. Here is a full, unedited list of the Lumberjacks involved. Amazing Red, Kid Cash, Loki, Jorge Estrada, end of list. Wow, there's a yeah. lot of Lumberjacks. Four that's Lumberjacks. The rest of them yeah. were busy chopping down trees. I suppose that's true. Yeah. One for each side. Yeah. This match was like, it was a good match, yeah. but TNA is TNA, so at the end of this match, Jerry Lynn pins R-Truth. And I fucking thought, oh my god, they beat our truth Like, Jerry Lynn won the NWA title? Mm-mm. And then I realized, wait a second, it's for the exhibition title. Yeah. Wow. Because what even was though... I invested for? Even though Borash identified Truth as the current reigning and defending world champion, his title was on the line. You know, I thought about this today. It. thought about this today because I've been thinking about all these belts they have in, in uh, AEW, this, these uh, 18 belts. And, you know, there was always a deal where, like, WCW had the world title... And like the U.S. title, and then they had the cruiserweight title, right? And the sure. cruiserweight title is for the little dudes who were geeks, right? Yep. Okay, so you would never see like Goldberg fight for the cruiserweight title. He was too big, but even if he wasn't, he would never fight for that title because he was a star. He fought for the world title, so it was like a, it was like the 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 you know, it was just like a, a for geeks basically, right? So you know, there's always the idea of well, you know, if you want to make it seem more prestigious then, like, the Cruiserweight champion should, you know, be portrayed as being on the same level as the world champion. Sure. And he should he should fight for, you know, the world title and whatever. And that was always, like, the thing. But then I was watching this match, and it suddenly struck me that the whole idea of the X Division was not to be the Cruiserweights. It was the X Division is uh, no limits. That's the idea, yeah. Okay? But I, I watched Jerry Lynn beat Truth... So that the exhibition champion was on the level of the world champion, and it suddenly occurred to me, well, what the fuck do we need two belts for then? <laughs> right? If like what you just did is you what you basically did was now there's like a world title, but it also is it's not so special anymore because the exhibition guy is just as good. So now I'm like now I'm stumped. I'm kind of uh, I don't know about this. I don't think we need the X Division title and the world title being presented as equals. You know what I'm saying? We don't need two world titles. We need one. We also, need one pr- tr- like big prize. I also thought it was weird. Truth did not come out with this title for whatever reason. Because it wasn't on the line. Yeah, but a champ usually wears his belt around. I didn't want to confuse people like me. I see. Yes. So, yeah, the match itself was fun. Uh... Lynn got thrown outside at one point, and Kid Cash just started throwing stomps at him. He started throwing him in, so I guess Kid Cash is going to be the next... Well, although Kid Cash lost on the show to Jorge. Mm -hmm. Never mind. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Uh, Lynn makes his comeback, got by far the best reaction of anyone on the show. The the crowd was totally into him. And uh, somewhere here, Truth hit a low blow. Red and Estrada both protested, and Loki snapped Truth's neck on the ropes. Lynn hit a TKO in one. And you can say that at least Truth had it coming, because he had been a dick before. So... Even though he had got ganged up by four on one at the end here. He, 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 he had been a dick. So I thought, hey, you know what? That was a fun match. Championship match. They saved the interference of the last thing of the show. That was a fun show. And I looked down and said, there's 15 minutes to go. It sure is. Leonard's baffled here about this uh, this secondary title thing. The Intercontinental Champion. Remember when the Intercontinental title was like a prestigious thing? Everyone talks about 90, Back in the day. 91, the 92, workers, 92 no. 93, yeah, Bret et cetera, Hart. et cetera. Yes, the idea was never that the Intercontinental Champion was as good as the World Champion. He was the second best guy, okay? And sometimes, you know, the second best guy would get so good that you would believe that, okay, he might be able to beat the top guy. But, like, you know, they did that that Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, World versus Intercontinental Championship yeah, yeah, yeah. matches. Shawn didn't win. No. Bret was the better guy. Ran- Bret was the number one guy. I see okay? champion Randy Savage yes. Travis Hogan several times. And yes. when they did Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan, and it was title for title, the Intercontinental Champion won, and it wasn't like Hogan. Hogan was beaten. He was no longer the top guy. The Warrior was now the top guy, and he was the world champion, right? Yep. That's the thing. Like, your secondary champion, there's no need to have two guys that are equal as world champion. We don't need two titles in WWE at this point. It's, 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 there's a, there's a top guy, and there's the secondary guy, right? That's what I'm saying. Truth goes to the end of the line. They're behind Amazing Red. That's right. <laughs> the end of the line. Yeah. 
He's yeah. he's below Bruce. Yes. Right. Hmm. And so, the ticket lady. I suppose so. Don West does his hard sell for next week's show. By the way, when hmm. Don does his hard sell, watch Mike today. Oh, yeah. Look at, look at him like a proud father. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Well, he says at the end of him, when uh, he's done, today says, well, I can't do better than that. Yep. He can't. <laughs> he could not either. So here's Don's plug. We have AJ Styles versus Jerry Lynn in an X Division Championship ladder match. Ron Killings hates the X Division. What kind of havoc will he wreck next week? Sonny Siaki defamed and burned his Elvis suit on live TV. What direction is he headed? Plus Jeff Jarrett, Scott Hall, Six Pack and more. You'd better tune in. Wow. He plugged one match. A match. Hey. That's what they had. And he pretty much gave it away, too, because he said this X Division match. And then Dre Lawler, or uh, Brian Lawler, who hates the X Division. Ron Killings. But anyway. Ron Killings, yeah. yes. Yeah. Is going to wreak havoc. Yeah. Sorry. J- Jeff Jarrett versus BG James. Hmm. BG comes out trying to do the road dog stick, but his music is still playing, and Boris is talking over him. He's already annoyed. Yeah. So all they do in this match is fight on the floor and hit each other with chairs. Well, if you remember, it was but one week ago. Yes. Where BG did a run in and then said he was already blown up. Yep. So this was like they got like seven minutes, and this was the most nothing happening easy match. It was like do a real slow high spot, lay on the mat, walk around outside, throw a punch or two. I think there was even a chin lock at some point. Yes. Chin lock at the end. Yeah. Brian. Uh, Brian. Uh, uh, Road Dog was not in shape to be doing a main event. Was that in between them bashing each other with chairs and it wasn't a DQ? Over and over. Well, you know, Jared likes his chairs. So many chairs. Which would be fine, right. except, except the finish. Except, except the build the finish. Right. Where Jared's got a chair there and screaming about, how, screaming about how unfair it is. Like We haven't seen it a dozen times already. Elix Skipper, who suddenly is now involved in all this for some reason. And Brian Lawler are trying to interfere. Brian Lawler was attacking Jeff Jarrett for weeks, by the way. Remember that? Yeah. So Jeff finally hits his chair shot. BG kicks out. Brian Lawler mouths what the fuck very vocally. Yeah, he sure did. It was quite a mouthing. BG hits the pump handle slam. The most devastating finish in the history of wrestling. And the heels all attack for the DQ. That's your main event. Right. You paid nine ninety nine for that, Craig. Nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Sure, I haven't been sixteen ninety nine in twenty twenty three dollars. So, <sighs> Scott Hall and Six Pack save. Truth comes out and attacks with the baby faces. I thought he was feeding with the X Division. I don't know why he's mad at Scott Hall and Six Pack. And then he's laying out belt shots, and Zara says, "Here, let me do one." And he takes Truth's belt, the belt he has said he is obsessed with. For literally the entire time this company's been around. And he wallops somebody with a belt, and he turns to Truth and says, Thanks, buddy, and gives it back. Show is... I'm so confused. Yeah. Did you see on the board last week, uh, the show we reviewed last week, they put up uh, Jerry Jarrett's excerpt from his book, and he liked the show. What? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know, man. Sometimes we read those, and it's like, I totally agree with Jerry Jarrett. And other times I read it, and I'm thinking, what in the hell? What? But that's what he uh, that's what he did. No. The finish is report is frankly boring. I don't know if you care. Oh yeah, we, did we do that last week? Give the people I what they like want. We haven't been doing I don't think so. All right. Yeah, I think we've been forgetting it. But all right, you you ready for your For the uh, sake of completeness, completeness, let's go. All right. The finishes on this show were clean pin, clean victory in a tables match, clean submission and two clean pins in a best of three falls match, clean pin in a tag match, clean pin Pin after interference and DQ due to interference. I was talking to somebody about this, and like, I haven't I haven't kept track, but like every main event of TNA is a horrible finish. But yeah. there's not bad finishes up and down the show, like we saw for on on night. Well, we're going to be getting to the Jarrett era where yeah. his matches are the main event, and he always yes. does this kind of thing. Yeah. Which uh, you know, if you watch a lot of AEW. The amazing thing about Jarrett nowadays is now Jarrett's 54 and he's not like a main eventer. He's he's like a, a, a famous guy, but he's not like a main eventer. He's not going to be going for the title anytime soon. So he does the same thing he does in NWA and TNA, but now he does those things and then he loses. So now it works. Right. 
when you do all of that rigmarole or whatever, and then the heel gets his at the end of the match, it's actually like a lot of fun. When you do all that bullshit, but the heel goes over and it's heat, and you do it every fucking week, it was just like, it was years of how horrible this was. But now he's doing it in 2023 and losing at the end. And it's like, hey, that was a lot of fun. Fans going nuts. It's amazing how things change. They need to steal one more piece of business from the Saturday Night Main event, if you will. And that's the green screen for those opening promos. Put something behind them. Like, you know, we're FTR. You know, have no fits or whatever behind the... Just something. Like what you got behind you right now. He's in an empty room. Ready? Boom. Huh? Hey, look at that. Now Lance is a star. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.